Hello, hello everybody. We are going to continue our Ace Attorney trilogy journey with uh, more of a final case of the first game, which just keeps on rolling. It is definitely the longest one. And so far things have been a little odd, especially with the additions they decide to throw in. It's like, see, it's the DS game case. Extra things for you. So, I'm still reserving judgment for the final bit. Because, I mean, it's not like other pieces, like other cases have been entirely logical. Like the case going, well, we just don't know if that second bullet existed. When there is very clearly a bullet hole in the photo that is evidence proving that yes two bullets did get shot in that diddly game thing so what if the second bullet was not found there is evidence that there was a second bullet granted bibbidi bop 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 it's not like that the first bibbidi beep wasn't like great because bop bop my brain's just going on flames <laughs> thinking it back to the first testimony yeah well either way last time we have concluded that Marshall is definitely involved somehow Meekins was confronted by a man dressed as Goodman in the evidence locker so in my opinion I think that it was Marshall primarily because I don't know who else it could be because, at least from what we've seen, Marshall and Goodman are probably of a similar statue. I don't, I don't think Gant would have tried to, like, pretend to be Goodman. And I highly doubt it would have been Sky. No, not Sky. Angel. They're, my brain is mixing up names now. But yeah, things are just going down. This is a twisty, turny case. Let us see... What happens today? I think we're gonna be defending Meekins? I still don't- I still don't understand how Meekins is being, like, put on trial for murder, considering that there wasn't a body, that we know that Goodman was attacked, or like, according to the court, Goodman was attacked and killed at the prosecutor's parking lot at 5.15? Which would give Meekins the perfect alibi. Bibbin. Then again, the autopsy technically says died within four to five, yeah, like four o'clock to five thirty. But the fact remains, uh, blah blah. blah. I still again because Meekins was like attacked in the evidence locker, then sent to, like send the report of the his own attack slash murder of Goodman to Edgeworth, which I, I, I don't get. I don't get. But maybe this will explain things. February 24th, 9.41 a.m. District Court. So what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as, confu is as confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So, how'd it go? It's as Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. I figured as much, and so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana, don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as you as they are. Miss Skye, hmm? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the, de police, uh, in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. What kind of trace evidence? Blood-stained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're gonna accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Sky? 
Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Yeah, because this case is all over the place. Once we actually get in there proper, I'm going to review the evidence, because we have, we have so much goddamn evidence. So much evidence. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. And the prosecution is... Hmm. Hmm? I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. Let's quickly go over the evidence. We have the Goodman ID card, which we used to prove that Goodman was the victim in both things because Gant was being a weirdo. We have the prosecutor's trophy, which I have no idea what it's for. We have not used it so far. We have the murder weapon that supposedly Lana used to kill Goodman. We have the parking stub for the car that Goodman was found in. We have the blue badger. I don't know why this is evidence. We have the autopsy report, which again, died within an hour and a half of four. <laughs> so it's like four to 5.30. He died in that range. That's a long range that they keep saying, oh, 5.15, 5.15. Then why isn't it repeated in the goddamn autopsy report? Then we have this, which proved the SL9 connection. Then we have this, which proved that Lana made a phone call at 518 saying the word muffler. Which... I don't know. Because... Ba ba ba. Bruce Goodman was supposedly killed there at 515. But... I assume that the person who was posing as Bruce Goodman took the SL9 evidence, including the murder weapon, back at the police department. And if that guy was Jake Marshall, who pretended to be Bruce Goodman and attacked Meekins in the evidence room, he might have placed it in the muffler, but then how would Devlana know? to say, hey, check the muffler or whatever, three minutes after he supposedly died, Bruce Goodman. The parking lot floor plans, yes. The crime photo, which doesn't, which yes, has a blood-stained coat, but doesn't show Lana actually killing anybody. The victim's shoe that has Lana Sky's blood and Goodman's blood, though I thought that uh, Angel said that she only tested Lana's blood. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Wrong kind of check. Hmm. Then we have the switchblade knife, the murder weapon from the SL9 case. Technically not evidence, it's just in our inventory. The ID card record, which proves that Edgeworth went in there, but we don't know who else. We don't know the 777. We don't know... Well, obviously the... Oh, wait. 4989596 has to be Meekins. Even though the game wouldn't let me ask Meekins for his ID number, because Meekins had to have gotten into the evidence room as well, but at the same time, it couldn't have been. Because that would also prove that Meekins went into the evidence locker 25 minutes before whoever was pretending to be Goodman and then entered again. But that's the only way it could possibly be is because it's the same number. 4-4-9-8-9-5-9-6 four, four, nine, nine, has to be Meekins' ID number. Which means Meekins went into the evidence locker, presumably left, then came back. Hmm. In fact, Meekins only went in 10 minutes after Edgeworth if that is indeed Meekins, which I presume it has to be. That's just inventory. Let's see. Evidence from a past case of Edgeworth's brought back to his office by Gant's request. Did we ever, like, look, look this over? Might as well. The tag says AI16. What's that got to do with anything? Nothing, apparently. At least, that's what Edgeworth said. Hmm, that makes it seem all the more suspicious. This might turn out to be the clue that breaks the case. 
Wouldn't that be nice? So yeah, this is just a... Yeah. Isn't this like, yeah, the thing that Gaunt sent to Edgeworth's for safekeeping? For some reason. I completely forgot about that because it just feels out of place to a degree. Then we have Goodman's lost item report, which I assume to be his ID number, because he actually started to write his I well his ID, but he couldn't remember his ID because he didn't have his ID. Because he was trying to find his lost ID. <laughs> then we have ev like evidence of bloody handprints and blood pool in the evidence locker. The rubber glove from the SL9 case. The evidence locker that can only be opened by specific people's diddly dee. The unstable jar, which we put back together from the broken pieces of the SL9 evidence. And then Marshall's fingerprints found in blood left behind on the aforementioned evidence locker. Blah, blah, blah. That's a lot to keep track of. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow, this is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence relating to the, relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the what? Well, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things, even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait. Very well, let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Wow, the judge didn't call order. Hello, Meekins, you poor bastard. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir. I am Officer Mike Meekins, sir. My occupation is, um, that would be murderer, sir. Uh... So you're telling us you're a professional killer? Sir, it was me, sir! I'm the one who did it! I'll never kill anyone again, sir! You've gotta believe me, sir! Uh, actually, what we'd like to hear from you is... Sir, I'm what you would call part of the younger generation, sir! A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend! Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! <laughs> Help me, sir! <laughs> <laughs> ah, poor judge. Officer Meekins. Yes, sir! Give us your report of the crime. Consider that an order. Yes, sir! As you wish! After all, I am part of the generation that must be told what to do, sir! We can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. Why would he say that his occupation is a murderer? Crime report, sir. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir! I was suddenly attacked! I fought for my life, then I... I did it! After that, I passed out until another officer smacked me awake. Hmm. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you? Do unto others before they do unto you! That's the Meekins family motto, sir! I see. Then you fainted and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir! He knocked me upside the head, the head sir! Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work with. Crime report, sir! Let's see. We'll start with... Well, first we'll save. First we'll save. And next, press. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, you, do you not? Yes, sir! I'm in charge of hiring new recruits, sir! Yikes! Now there's a scary thought. Evidence transferal was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. 
I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir. The Blue Badger? Yes, sir. The lovely police mascot created by the Chief of Detectives, sir. That horrifying thing. I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transferal process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. <laughs> I see. Sounds like a very, uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I relocated the Blue Badger to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? Hmm, so I assume that means that the first time we assume Meekins entered the 4.50 p.m. entry, I am assuming that is Meekins putting the Blue Badger into the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room! In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir! I have one right here around my neck! So then, your ID number should be listed on here, right? Uh... There it is! I found it! This is the one right here! Could you please read us the number? Yes, sir! It's 4989596! That's my number, sir! I see, huh? But the number, 4989596, is shown as being used twice! Please explain, witness. It's no real mystery, sir! The first time is when I relocated the Blue Badger to the evidence room, and the second time is when I went to go... Went to go? Went to go get after... The blah, 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 blah. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. Evidence of all has been updated. Yay. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. So you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir! A knife! Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you. What happened then? Well, with me charging on in on him like that, he was as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you just kept her cool, your hand wouldn't be... When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by his collar. I fought for my life. Then I, I did it. What exactly do you mean when you say did it? I know I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched the knife from him. You took his knife? I spun around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sir to close my eyes like a man. I, uh, see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood. And then, then the next thing I knew... Yes? He punched me right in my face, sir! After that, I passed out until another officer smacked me awake. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious! Oh, right. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right the head, too. I woke up crying, tears of pain. That's nice. Uh, I mean, it's nice that you recovered, that is. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir. The Blue Badger, sir. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Um... Yes, Officer Meekins. With regard to that, sir, take a look at this. It was sent to my jail cell. Chief Gant delivered it to me just this morning, sir. The Chief delivered it? What is that? A videotape? Yes, sir, that's absolutely right, sir. A videotape, sir. It contains footage for the security camera in the evidence room. 
what? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape, and I was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh, please stop using that word murder, sir. It scares me. A video of a real murder. Just what are we getting ourselves into? I wonder what this will look like. Well, that's horrifying. Because, yeah, there's the the lit up uh, Bruce Goodman thing. And there's the Bruce Goodman person, who's at least supposedly Bruce Goodman. <laughs> of course, being covered up. The glove falls out. Meekins comes in with his night, like, yeah, his nightstick. Oh, he did slash at him. Wow, he just went for the attack. Didn't see the disarm, though. Poor Meekins smacked down. And then that other one was opened. So it has to be, if that's Jake Marshall's, that has to be it. <laughs> Everyone is just like, that was so worthless. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? Yeah, I'd say the blue badger does that to people. What the hell was the wriggling piece of plywood? Sir, that is the pride and joy of the entire criminal affairs department, sir. It's the blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Security video added to the court record. Yes, well, anyway, this tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter someone in the evidence room and some sort of uh, activity did take place. Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that all right with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir, as you wish, sir. Mystery Man. His face can't be clearly seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So it must have been him. No one else could have unlocked it. What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have had to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. Personally, I would like to point out in the video that obviously another one had to have been opened. Because the diddly D was literally right then and there added. Unless the video was altered with. His face can't be clear seen clearly in the video. Well, let's press anyway. Tell me, were you able to get a good look at him? At the face of the man who attacked you with a knife? Sir, if you must label uh, you if you must label people as having seen or not seen the man's face, I believe I would have been classified as the latter. The latter? But you were standing right in front of him, were you not? More to the point, you're the person who fought him, aren't you? Oh yes, sir, but I didn't get a clear look at his face, sir. I'm not the kind of guy who looks directly at people when talking with them, you see. He literally is looking away from everybody. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good trait for a police officer. Still, I'm sure it was him! I bet my badge on it! But there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. Well, let's press just to be safe. But you don't know that for sure, do you? You have never actually saw Detective Goodman's face. Well, I suppose you might say that. 
That is, if you must label people as having seen or not seen it. Since his face can't be identified in the video, only you can verify it. But why is everyone looking at me? If I had to label your stares as disturbing or... Meekins. Ah! Having been shown a questionable video at best, we are not in the best of moods. Now please be certain when you testify. Yes, sir. You claimed the man who brandished a knife on you was Bruce Goodman. Tell us why you are positive it was him. I mean, he opened the locker which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. About these lockers, is there no other way to open them? No, sir. I myself tried all kinds of methods in the past. They only respond to the registered fingerprints, sir. I wonder what kind of methods he's tried. If the man opened the locker's lock, which only responds to its registered fingerprints, then he must have been the person the locker was assigned to. Exactly my point, sir! And this too! The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir! How do you know that information? I've heard rumors, sir, from people in the know, sir! People in the know? The workers in the department cafeteria, sir, they keep me informed. They also listen to my romantic troubles, sir. For the record, the open locker did indeed belong to Detective Goodman. I verified this information through a more reliable source. Hmm, so the victim opened the locker with his own fingerprint. So it must have been him. No one else could have unlocked it. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. Sir! If I may say something, sir. Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify enough to this, sir. Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is... Unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Is there a problem with the security video? There's a problem. Regarding the video contained in this tape... I mean, can I check the tape? I can check the tape. Is there a way to, like, fast forward it? Or is it just watching it again? Because, obviously, that opens, but it has a light over it. So what if it was already opened? And most importantly, again, the coat isn't there. Regarding the video on this tape, there is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the possibility that... The man may not have been Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction? Interesting. Your Honor, I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. I propose we have the defense point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. How would we... He would want me to point it out. <laughs> he would want me to. Very well, proposal accepted. Please, let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us the contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video? This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, you can do it Mr. Wright. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, pa or pause the video. Let's take a good look at it. Because there are two things that I am weirded out by. First is the light, but more importantly is the coat. Please don't play it too many times. I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates the man may not have been Bruce Goodman? Because again, the light might mean something, but the main thing that proves that he might not be Bruce Goodman is the coat. Because somebody would have had to have opened it and put the coat in there. And pause. The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this! Hmm. Yes, that is strange. Something certainly seems unnatural about that. What could it mean? Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Wright, but you seem to have forgotten the point of this exercise. The point? What you're looking for is one thing and one thing only. Something that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman. 
Oh, yeah. Woo! I almost walked right into the defense's trap. I'll take him under arrest, sir. Rats. I need to slow down and tackle things one at a time, but I thought I did. Play the video again. Just remember one thing, Mr. Wright. Every th time you point your finger, someone gets hurt. Says the one pointing his finger at us. Because maybe I have to select the, like, diddly D itself properly. Or maybe it is the light. Because again, it has to be that, because that's the thing that proves it. It was obviously opened. If only they had, like, exits. So let's try and actually click on it properly. The thing that's strange about this video would have to be a... this? Hold on a second, I need to use my eye drops. Well, I don't get it. Um, would you mind if I brought your eye medicine? Before your eyes get too teary, perhaps you should take think this through, hmm? Come on, I've selected the right thing. That proves that somebody had to have opened it. Alright, so maybe it is the thing. Blah, blah, blah. At least they let you go through it multiple times. So maybe it is the light? Let's try the light! The thing that's strange about the video has got to be this! Officer Meekins! Sir! Do you mean me, sir? As I understand it, the locker apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If it's a match, the light turns on and the locker and the lock is released. Uh, according to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. It's already unlocked. Do we have to watch the entire thing again? I do find it interesting that they decide to, like, I guess it makes sense to use 3D for this. When the victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind a little or to a little earlier. We already, we already saw this. I already figured it out from the beginning. I just figured that the fact that something is obviously put into another locker proves that somebody else had to have been in there, opened it, and put something in, in the, around the time of the supposed murder. Here, notice the light? What's this? It's already lit! Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. <laughs> was that a chicken noise? Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered, and the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know! It must have broken down! Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. Oh well, it just goes to show novices should keep their mouths shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes. Why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honor? <laughs> yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um, maybe something like jammed the system sensors. Oh, 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 oh! That other bug jammer thing that was in the evidence room by the metal detector and the fishing rod. Something jammed the sensors, say. There's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so. There's got to be another clue somewhere in this footage. Very well, let's inspect the video once more. The locker wasn't locked. Mr. Wright, please point out the cause for this. Oh, we can go over. Hmm. Let's rewind. 
Nope, his hands are free. And we can't see down to where the bug was. That's part of the, the detector. It was on the very bottom. Hmm. <laughs> they did a handy job at making sure you can't see who did it. try again cuz this is it like we can't see where the the bug thing is unless it's meant to be that but the only thing that i notice change is this they'll probably say no the thing that's is got to be this Objection. i'm wrong and you've lost sight of the problem at hand what the reason the locker was not locked, that is the one and only thing you must point out here, Mr. Wright. <laughs> now I'll really place him under arrest, sir! Alright. Because again, I don't see the bug, unless... Uh, maybe I, <laughs> I probably should have revealed my own footage. Because I thought it was on the very bottom, and that's the metal detector. Maybe I just need to select this area and be like, there was a, a bug thingy there. Because I don't see anything. Let's... Yeah, because so far there's nothing over here, but it's already unlocked. That's just a button. My brain is just like, is that a thing? Yeah, there's nothing on his person that immediately would go... So maybe I am supposed to select the bundle of stuff because we can't clearly see the bug itself. Nothing here that seems to reveal it. So what if I specifically went there? The thing that's a me nope, we did that again. Hmm. What would be the cause of it? Hmm. Because I have a clear idea of what it should be. It's the bug thing, right? I'm trying to think, you see, like, anything else that would be, like, revealing. Hmm. Because it's already unlocked, as we can see. I'm just trying to think of what it could be. Because it's already unlocked, so it has to be something... Again, that would be kind of mean for them to assume that you looked at everything in there, unless, especially because it wasn't added to the court record. Is it the blue badger? Because, no, because that obviously... Wait. 
Yeah, because there's already the fingerprint on there. It's just a little smudgy on the footage. Hmm. I'm just trying to think through... Exactly. Because what would have caused caused it? I don't know. Hmm. Am I dumb? don't see anything that, like, is moved differently. Hmm. The music, I think, is getting to me. I'm just trying to think. They're asking me to point out what would be the cause for it to have activated? What would be the cause? I genuinely don't know, game. genuinely trying to think what could be the cause of the thing for it to have already have been unlocked beforehand because it, like they said what how it's supposed to work is that the door closes it automatically engages the thing again so I'm just trying to think because none of the other ones are open none of the other ones are open Because it couldn't have been, like, a fingerprint, pr fingerprint glove, because it was already unlocked, and then it stayed unlocked. So I'm just trying to think... think about it. Because, like, what in this room would cause it? Or, like, what would cause it specifically? So I'm just trying to think. ba 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 ba, -ba. very beginning and pay close attention okay because I'm just going to assume that it's nothing to do with anywhere else in the room it's not the bug jammer thing or whatever the hell I thought it was maybe it specifically has to do with the moment of it being opened because we see the glove fall out would that be important hmm is there anything that I would be like hmm this is specifically very important Extremely thin rubber, rubber glove. Hmm. Because would that matter? It's already supposedly open. It's, it was not officially closed. It was not officially closed according to it, because we can obviously see. Like, well, if I care to back up all the way. The light is on the entire time before he even goes to open it. 
Well, screw it. Let's present the glove. Maybe it's a magical glove. It was opening from the inside. The, the, the glove came from the inside. Okay, so that was the right answer. What the hell? What, what was I missing? Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. At least they're not playing the music. That I think the music was the real thing getting to me. So, yeah, how is the glove? Because it's a thin rubber glove. So, would that really get in the way of something? What this? Something white fell out of the locker. But, sir, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are opened. I often fall out and roll great distances when I open my door. <laughs> we can't be sure that item was completely inside the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The, sensors, the sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In... inserted? Can we even see? I don't think you can even see, like, the glove hanging out. Like, if you could see the glove hanging out, I would be happy, but... Meh. I don't think that there is any indication that the glove was blocking anything. It just falls. Granted, I guess that is supposed to be the indication that it just falls out. Eh. This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Instead of the door closing, my tie chokes me. But the object would have had to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Well, it is a thin rubber glove. But then at the same time, wouldn't that damage the rubber glove? Meh. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator. But at the crime scene, there just might have been something that fits the description. But, but sir, by insulator, you don't mean... I think I finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was this insulator that was stuck in the locker door? It was this pot, sir. I found this near the locker, a thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that it was the victim's locker. It has the tag that says SL9 incident. <laughs> Ding! The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? Sir, it would appear so, sir! Order, order, order! So are we to believe then that the victim whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room was not Bruce Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. The victim in the video is indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir, m me sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Oh, you mean that, sir? Of course, sir! Is this a joke? Yeah, what is there left to testify for Meekins? Very well, begin your testimony. Mystery Man, number two. There's one thing that proves this man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his ID card. But we have the uh, lost and found report. An ID card record, I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. Just before the crime, hmm? Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police stuff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too, although it doesn't make much of a difference. There were only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared by noon. 
Right, I see. Now let us move on to the cross-examination. I know precisely what we need to do here. We need to present the lost and found thing that Bruce Goodman was writing. First we'll save. And then we'll press. So unlike your earlier testimony, you believe this to be rock solid, do you? Yes, sir! Solid as stone, sir! If my hand wasn't wrapped in bandages, I'd even give you the V for victory sign, sir! Couldn't he just use his right hand for that? Let's hear him out fully. As we've seen, one never knows what he might say until the very last second. Well, that's true. Well, we know that. Well, let's press on this. Earlier, I believe you testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir! He didn't show me any ID card, sir! Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card, all he had to do was show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. Maybe he just panicked! Everything stems from contradictions. Let's point them out. Mr. Wright, what do you think? I'm confused. What? The problem with his ID card testimony is far too obvious. It's not like Edgeworth to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we've got. I... Unless the game wants me... Well, let's play safe. Let's... Test... We'll press on everything else. Is that card hanging from your neck one of these ID cards? Yes, sir! This card right next to my cuff, sir! I keep it here so I won't ever forget it. But what if someone were to steal it from you, keeping it out in the open like that? Maybe I shouldn't wear it around my neck. Remember when I said two out of three times my tie gets stuck when I get out of my car? Well, the remaining time it's my ID card that gets stuck. Instead of the door closing, my ID card chokes me. Maybe I should just leave this one alone. At any rate, each police officer has only one ID card. Both the police department and the prosecutor's office can attest to this. Please proceed with your testimony. When an ID card, there's a record of it. Let's press just to be safe. Let it be noted that this is the record of the witnesses referring to. Let me see. Yes, that would be it, Detective Goodman. What's the matter? According to this, Mr. Edgeworth, your name is on here. <laughs> he bows. So it is, Your Honor. Not that prosecutor again. Hey, maybe he's behind all this. Being a prosecutor, he could hide the evidence. Mommy, is that man in blue a murderer? <laughs> Don't stare at him. You've got a, the wrong color, kid. It would seem the inquiry committee will want to speak with you again today. I have nothing to be ashamed of regarding my actions or their consequences. For now, let us continue with the cross-examination. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. It must be so difficult for him. Well, I'm going to presume that Goodman's lost sight of report. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A lost item report? It's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess, you believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Mortar! Order! So now, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't even require much thought. The man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order! 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 Does this prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. Bravo, Mr. Wright. B Bravo? Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15 p.m. on the day of the crime, the man in the evidence room Officer Meekins encountered was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. 
First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Uh, that is, well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago, you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't going to end well. Well, well, it seems you finally realized exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. The defense has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place at the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So? So the real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot, at the prosecutor's office. The murderer being Miss Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. The trustworthy witness observed the moment of the defendant used the murder weapon. Ah! I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all trapped from the beginning. <clears throat> the activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekins encountered? And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something else or Lana. I do. How am I supposed to get myself out of this? Object! Objection! One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. It just keeps going. <laughs> what, is it just going to show Gant staring in silence? That's what this feels like. <clears throat> or is he going to point out the thing I've been wanting to point out this entire time? However, it cannot be said that this is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. The defense demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor, but the prosecution considered the incident at the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. Just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean? Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh? Whom do you have in mind? Someone we have a reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have testified. What is his or her name? Jake Marshall. Officer, Jake Marshall. Why him? Can't let Edgeworth know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. <coughs> Very well. The court will take a 30-minute recess while the witness is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court is now in recess. I'm still weirded out by the rubber glove blocking thing. Granted, I should have probably gone...
on, hmm, I wonder why they're specifically showing the glove falling out so much. So, yeah, in the future I should stop going, ooh, this unrelated thing that might be a thing, and instead focus on the things right before my eyes. You know, b b do not lose the forest through the trees. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured anything out. Lana, you're the one who knows everything. Emma, you always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. You are. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. <laughs> Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey. Hey! 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 I didn't see you there, Chief Prosecutor Sky! That's okay, so have you brought what I asked? Oh! 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 oh, oh. You mean this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident? But Lana, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read them. I can't believe you. You, the chief prosecutor, were a witness in that case. The Sky was a witness? SL9 incident files received from Lana Sky, solved two years ago. Files for the Joe Dark killings. Well, wait until this section plays out, get to the beginning of the uh, actual court bit, and then we'll check out the incident files. Take it from me! You don't want anything to do with serial murderers! <laughs> oh, what? Now he brought you your stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? Emma, but why? Why is your name in here? What? My name's in there? I don't know, unless... No, it couldn't be. Lana, this SL9 incident, is that... That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... The Joe Dark killings. The... Joe Dark... No... No, Lana! That's over with! No! Did she run away? Emma, wait! She ran away! Uh, you know what? I just remembered! I gotta go somewhere! Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here! Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Damon Gant, Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't just be a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck, but well, before we go in, let's check this out. Incident number SL9. Closed. Perpetrator Joe Dark. Crime, serial murder, sentence, death. Victims, Edward Jones, Jason Knight, Edith Kirby, Rachel Moss, Jeb Bates, Neil Marshall. Marshall? As in Jake Marshall related to Marshall? Head prosecutor Miles Edgeworth witnesses Lana Sky and Emma Sky as witnesses. Huh. Investigative Tax Force. Executive investigators were Damon and Lana. That seems a bit odd, because Lana was a witness. Maybe she was an investigator before she became a witness? Maybe? And then head investigator Bruce Goodman, with fellow investigators Jake Marshall and Angel Starr. Well. Huh. Also, a uh, conflict of interest, because uh, Jake Marshall, if... They, they wouldn't use the same last name unless they really want to trip you up, but that's two marshals related to this case. Okay, interesting. I 
better take a good look at this file. Granted, for all that file, there wasn't much to it. Yeah, the only weird thing was the, uh, the videotape part. Where it's like, ah, point out the diddly D. Point out the glove. Alright, 12.14 p.m., District Court, courtroom number 9. The court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Jake Marshall. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Oh, I'm just a man. Same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know. You're a patrolman. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear it, the howling, you can hear the howling wind calling it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, Your Honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day the crime took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? A desperado soul is the boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In plain old English. Day of the crime. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. They said it was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. So you admit you didn't do your job. I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint-activated locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint-activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. He's not that good with machines, or with following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses, now don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? Also, this makes me think that he's even more likely to be the fake Goodman in this case. If he didn't know about the fingerprint card readers, then it's possible that he literally didn't know. And he just got lucky when he went to pilfer Goodman's stash. This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. I like the judge. Day o' the crime. Deo de Crimo. I'll quickly save. Let's press everything. How exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved in the security camera monitor. That room's so still, even time dies in there. I was just a caretaker who interred the recordings. You interred them? Videos of nothing aren't very useful. When the time would come, I'd erase the tape. If nothing unusual is recorded, tapes are to be erased every six hours. Each time I'd erase a tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy has a flair for the dramatic, but it isn't going to do him any good. So in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I just said, partner? I told you that ain't my style. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. No desperado I know lets rules get in his way. No desperados I know join the police force. So Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime... Just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. There was a rubber glove stuck in the victim's locker. Do you know anything about it? Sorry, partner, can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? 
Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. You used to be a detective, so you'd be used so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism? Sorry, partner, I ain't good with machines. I couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite a uh, incredible. The sensors on the locker handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Now that he mentions it, Detective Gumshoe said something like that, too. At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? If I remember right, I was at a street-side saloon at the time it went down. What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Not even angel steak lunches can beat that parlor's Vignole Sapia pasta. Do you mean to tell us you abandoned your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this has at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually where Edgeworth says, Did you not want to raise <laughs> did you not want to raise this year? <laughs> I'm just an innocent. Hmm, I wonder if this is where I would present the evidence locker as evidence. Because the only evidence that I see relevant here, because our goal for this is to place Jake Marshall at the crime, which is Marshall's fingerprints and I guess the evidence locker. Hmm. Well, I guess let's press on that just to see. Out of ammo, Officer Marshall? That's right, partner. Or as you'd call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me to this crime, then you'd better draw. Otherwise, you're just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset. Hmm. One thing seems clear, despite being responsible for gunning the evidence room. The witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Texans don't take orders from anyone. Everyone knows that. Apparently your superiors don't. Okay, I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I'd best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I'd up better up the ante. I'd better up the ante, so I'm going to assume evidence locker. Nope. Hmm. Because my trump card is obviously the fingerprints. Or would it be the security video? Where we he'd say, if you're out of time, it's time to hit this. Hmm. So maybe I'm supposed to use the video and say your locker was opened? Because of the coat? Or is the SL9 incident files the... Hmm. Hmm. Because let's see. Is there anything here? Keep on the... Yeah, the evidence locker. Make three times a day. There's two security systems. He was at a street side saloon. Just the incident traveling. Hmm. So it's either this, where he's like, if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. So it's basically saying, hey, present something or be gone. if I save before I press this real quickly go through. Just so we have posterity of doing it. And then save again. Hmm. What evidence should I present and on what thing? Because we do have the... I guess the evidence locker... Well, we already used the evidence locker on the one thing that would be important, so that's obviously wrong. We have the fingerprints... We have the security video, and we have the SL9 incident files. Hmm. I'm going to say the videotape. Darn. Hmm. Because I'm just trying to think. 
of which piece of evidence, unless this is another one of those you have to, like, f go past multiple times. Well, let's see. Okay, I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I'd best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I'd better up the ante. What does that mean? Well, I guess the only thing... Because if it weren't for Phoenix saying, I have a trump card, but I better up the ante first, I'm going to say this. <laughs> yeah, because the entire reason why I was thrown off was it felt like Phoenix was saying, no, no, don't present the thing yet. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd that is you being called in to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or to be exact, a handprint. Hm, <laughs> listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crib. I pay my respects, that is, make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Again, if it weren't for that I better up the ante thing, along with the trump card, I would have done this first. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Your bloodstained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away, however. A luminol test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? It seems to me there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall, about the blood-stained fingerprints. Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints found at the scene of the crime. Bloodstained fingerprints. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be found in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as a bloodstained handprint. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The bloodstain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See? I had nothing to do with it. Hmm, the witness explanation appears valid, although there's no room f although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy's hiding something, I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Bloodstained fingerprints. And next time I should just go with my gut when I go, hmm, I think I should play this on this one. As opposed to believing the phoenix. Hmm. I don't have a reason for that. Well, let's press on this. So then, what about the bloody handprint? Wasn't mine. It's no mystery. Please explain. My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward from me with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kind of like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast, while the other's a type of murderer. He's right. Although seemingly alike, they're totally different. I don't see what homonyms have to do with this. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a blood stain at the scene, though thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found on the Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place the hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's not the only logical conclusion. Can't let that him squirm out of this one. I've got to find something. Something decisive to tie Officer Marshall to this crime. Because it's the other handprint.
Hmm. Would it be to use the floor plans to say where I got it, or would it be the handprint again? I think it's this again. Darn you. Or is it the floor plans? Because I want to say to the court that it wasn't that one. It was a different one where the blood was wiped away. So is it the floor plan or is it the videotape? Floor plans? Because I want to point out to where that is. Hmm. But the game is being rude. Then again, it also depends. Hmm. Was by chance. Because what ones should I do? Because it could... Is it the security video? Is it... Because... Yeah, the print had been wiped. It's not the same one. Maybe this one? Because again, I want to say we're not talking about the, the blood stain on Mr. Gumshoe's locker, we're talking about the one that was on his locker. So I'm trying to think which, like, line we need. Hmm. Because again, I want to say we're talking about the one that was wiped away, not the other one. So I'm just trying to think of, like, what line... What evidence? Because would it be the evidence floor plan and I would be like, point to that locker? Would it be uh, the blood stain? Would it be the security videotape? What does the game want from me? Hmm. Ba -ba -ba. Let me press everything again. Let me press everything again. Because maybe I missed something, maybe I missed a specific thing, because, again, sometimes the game wants you to do certain presses at certain times. That's because you, how do you put it, pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently his fingerprint data was never removed from that locker's program. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without even knowing it. Marshall's fingerprints updated. Found on the bloody handprint on Marshall's own locker. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? So that's what I missed. I didn't press on the first one. The picture? This seal of blood. In the desert, it's just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. So long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. What if I then present the videotape and say, I can prove it was you? Well, let's press on this. What do you mean by that? I skipped again, darn you. If so, then that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, they could leave the room without being caught on tape. We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you, you can show us the evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do show now. I can do it. It's the one thing I've been wanting to present all this time. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright. You might wind up being the one making the mistake. Now then, let's have another look at that video. Show us the is incriminating evidence of the witness, Officer Jake Marshall. It's gonna be the one thing I wanted to point out all this time. The fact that the Diddly D was obviously opened with the jacket being thrown in there.
Then again, it's also weird that we don't see Diddly D leaving. There! How's that for evidence? Please allow me to apologize for my colleague, Your Honor. He gets carried away sometimes, but I really wanted to. That's the thing. Yes, well, this certainly isn't a first. Will you forgive him, too, Officer Marshall? He's not a bad man, just a bit disillusioned. Of course. I'm not one to gun down unarmed boys. Oh, great. Now Edgeworth is defending me. Guess that means I missed the mark. No, I didn't. I pointed out the exact thing that I wanted to. The game just didn't take it. That's literally what I want to point out. Like, literally. It is that there's something hanging out. Was I not precise enough? And it's very annoying that this takes forever to get back there, because this is obviously the proper way to go. So come on, game. Let us get there. I should just be able to... Blah, blah, blah. I pressed it, goddammit. I pressed the right thing that you obviously want, you whore. And of course it's at the goddamn end. So I have to wait five billion years. It's like, oh, you didn't select the proper right thing. You didn't select the right pixels. Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll not soon forget, Officer Marshall. The days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video! Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. Your locker. That locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Let's rewind the video in real time. If we wait out the heat death of the universe, it'll loop all the way back around. Oh, the white cloth! It's gone! What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then, it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Mortar, order! It would seem that that's the only hold your horse is. Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needed to hide something, so he opened the locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he, o he ch happened to choose mine. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Now, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call you bluff. You say I open that locker, now prove it. I assume we present out the locker as evidence. Uh, fingerprint sensor. We talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. W what kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks ain't that aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? I only got one word for you, partner. No! <laughs> that was a good breakdown animation. <laughs> order, order, order! Witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Olay, please answer the question. What is he now, a bullfighter? That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure out the rest from here. We can? Have a look at these floor plans. 
There is no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Really? Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Um, he was the victim. He was disguised as the man. Officer Marshall was standing right here. There? But that's... That's the victim Detective Goodman was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you dressed up like Detective Goodman. But that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. May I point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his eye card, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me! Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had had his ID, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? You've got quite an imagination, partner. We got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dressed up as the victim. Hmm, I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt? Do we have evidence? Hmm. Could it be the... Lost report? But we already used that, but it's still here. Hmm. Because there's nothing left in the security video. Marshall's bloody fingerprints. Let me quickly save. Shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim. Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert heat. Ah! This can't be happening! It's obviously he's the one. What can I do? Hmm. It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics? For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Evidence that came about because he was in disguise, which would again be that jacket. Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later, as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument... Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. To put away the bloody clothes. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps, perhaps the video is the key to all our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. 
Very well. Let's take yet another look at the security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locket to put away the white cloth, which I think is his jacket, covered in blood. He couldn't leave if he was covered in blood. Please show us why the witness has opened his locker. Again, I think it's because when he attacked Meekins, he got covered in blood, and he couldn't leave the police department covered in blood, as that's way too suspicious. Granted, it's also suspicious for him to be dressed up as... I assume that this is it. For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room, though I don't know to what end yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked, and the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat? You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, partner. Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated you. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, now would we? Officer Marshall, tell, it to, tell the court what you did. All of it. All right. It seems the time has come. Another confession, or another testimony I'm gonna have to pick apart. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out and managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It was way too much blood for such a small donation. Well, let's cross-examine. Or was he also cut? Could it have been that he somehow got nicked? But then they wouldn't have pooled as well. What are you talking about, sir? When you say it, you mean... Do you even have to ask, partner? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since the case was closed. It was going to be complete. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. Not if I had anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only the case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at, at it myself one more time, no matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. The case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. But neither was Goodman. The... Or was he? No, head investigator was Bruce Goodman, but executive investigators were Damon and Lana. Hmm. So he was the head investigator, but... Hmm, weird. Why did he care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why I... I stole Detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transfer, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the Detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filing out that lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. That you returned it by leaving it at the parking lot? So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean the fingerprint activated lock, of course. 
No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker by yourself. But he could, but he could because the rubber glove just happened to get stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. But not that day. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins, so I knocked him out. You pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to sh be shown his ID. I'll have to think a little more about his raise this year. <laughs> when did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry I had to turn out that way. Made me knock him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Hmm, so you knocked Mr. Officer Meekins out and... I managed to escape, but... Let's see. Hmm. I managed to... I wonder if the game wants me to bring up that the knife was found elsewhere. And managed to escape, I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. So you did your research beforehand. Those who go into the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. The security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you bloodied your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins during, doing that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is on that day, there wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. But the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim shown on the tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is that evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Far away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer, this is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine, and I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm, the witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. I can't just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? But the case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for his crimes. One thing I can say for sure is he deserved his sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. That involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how it turned out. But there's something that still bothers me. Something went down on that trial. Something no one will talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Why is he so concerned with the incident? Maybe I should present him with the re uh, with what I think his real reason is? I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I better take another look at the files. I know exactly why. Because your brother was killed. Action. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I haven't even watched... <laughs> Man, I really need to watch me some Avatar. I remember cactus juice as like a meme from that show. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. And a list of murder victims. 
Neil Marshall. Are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago, he received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation with you? He was... my brother. He was investigating the murders of Damon Gant, the then Deputy Peace... Deputy Peace? Deputy Chief of Police. So that's who was in the bottom left-hand corner. His brother. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to protect and prosecute the killer. Why does he kind of resemble, uh, Von Karma? Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arraigned. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed, at least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it. And that's your reason for your insane actions. There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case would be reopened. Not satisfied with its resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. The things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's gotta be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means that the murder on the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Scott. But, but wait, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Objection. Which is why we examine the incident at the police department today. But there's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remains the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me this boy's got the draw on you, partner. All of the mysteries at the police department have been resolved, no doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Skye, and the testimony of one Miss Angel Star is completely uncontestable. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Ah! And he bows. I rest my case. It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time disproving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize that would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Hold it! Who said it? Oh, Emma! Your Honor, wait! Emma! The defense has an objection, a scientific objection, right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor, oh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor, all I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. 
Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. Oh, how nice of you. <laughs> how nice of Edgeworth. So am I going to cross-examine you now? I... I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out that SL9 incident referred to the joke Dark Killings. Now that she mentions it, the names of both Sky Sisters were in that file. With Lana being a head exec- or not head investigator, an in executive investigator. And then both Lana and Emma were, uh, uh, eyewitnesses. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing, the other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. Because actually, yeah, she has a point. The dancing blue badger was in front of Gumshoe's uh, locker. There was no one to have touched it that day with blood. So, I ran over there and looked at, at it again. So did you find something? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad, I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them... Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright, with regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Hmm, let me quickly check the thing again. I wish I had control over the diddly D, because again, it's blocking Detective Gumshoe's bibbity bop. Hmm. So I wonder if that plays a role here. Because that's the only thing remaining relating to the evidence room, I think. Well, that and the fact that the switchblade knife was found at the murder scene. Um, it appears the defense is troubled by the other mo blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of more of use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with the blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Yes, Your Honor. If, I ever, if ever I've needed to concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with the handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? I object! Objection. This handprint left at the crime scene. It's a right handprint. And it's pretty smeary, and I don't think that... And yeah, um, Marshall was... Was Marshall wearing gloves? Again, I wish I had access to the fast-forward and stuff with this. Kind of weird that it isn't given to you immediately. Granted, it could be just hard to see if they're wearing gloves in this. I guess that goes be counted as it. Clearly shows a contradiction! The only thing that seems clear is you're grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? The blue badger. Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is... Which item can prove something is missing? Blue Badger! What about that piece of plywood? The Blue Badger! Mascot of the police force! Defender of truth, guardian of proof! Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. 
Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The blue badger is not here, so? Why is that important, Mr. Ride? So watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? <gasps> That's right, so long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint on this spot on the locker. What? I like how that actually shocked Marshall. So that means, uh, just exactly what does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me, I didn't put them there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma, on that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the Blue Badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean the blood mark was left be there before the Blue Badger was brought in? So one moment! I will not allow such far-fetched boulder dash in my courtroom! It may sound far-fetched, Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, Blood was spilled not once, but twice. But, but how? One time was captured by this tape, taken by the security camera. O Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time. With the blue badger just standing there, dancing away. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been. It had to have been Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. Could it have been? I'm sorry, um, right, but there are only two people who it could it have been. It could have it either have been Meekins the first time, but obviously not. It could have been uh, Miles Edgeworth because he went in before Meekins, or it could be whoever was seven 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 seven. That's ridiculous! I refuse to accept your absurd claim. The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened. When did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize the defense's claims that, prior to Officer Meekins being caught by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in that evidence room. That's right. The blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us. When did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edgeworth said, proof must be presented. It would have been the when Mr. Officer Man went to gather the evidence the first time. But when would that have been? I guess 420? Because it couldn't have been Miles Edgeworth who did it, so it would have to be the whoever the 777 guy is. Because the autopsy report does say between 4 and 5.30. Shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defense please present the evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to have entered it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh! The ID card record! Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at... Let's see here, 4.50. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be... 4.40. Ah! Ah! Miles Edgeworth! Just what have you done? I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm. Nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminol test that the blood was there. 
However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away. But the real murder, by the real murderer, I would have just... I would have had just ten minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. There's only one other card remaining, number 77777777. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with 77777777. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Figure out whose ID number is 77777. <laughs> I love that they actually <laughs> lettered it out there. That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card, at least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number 77777777 belongs to someone with a rank of captain or higher. Someone who is a so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. But that's ridiculous! Just how... I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we may be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against an executive is accepted... An official charge? You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes. No, not you. To her. The defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. L Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course, we've looked up her ID number and it's not 77777. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we, occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. L Lana! I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant! Just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look at me? an investigator in that crime, in the eye, and say that you did. Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. <laughs> Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to do in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana! Even if it involved forging evidence. I kind of like that they're using a different transition between everybody. See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! Order! 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 Lana's remarks caused such a stir. The chaos... Oh, I would have to wait until the following day. I, I kind of dislike it when... The text boxes go to automatic mode. Seemingly at random. Well, stuff thickens. And now we are left in w what Lulu land. We'll go on a little bit longer, maybe do some investigation, if there is any investigation to have. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. 
sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We had to... We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I didn't know. I never knew that the SL-9 incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. <clears throat> Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. Lana wanted Dark and convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Judark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was the only trying to save me. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark killing, but wouldn't that be... decisive evidence? Then? At least by this universe's standards. I didn't see that one coming. Well, let's see. SL9 is a bit. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. But then suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage, but before he could, Marshall tackled him. Then, what happened? I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I, I can still see it now. Permanent picture. After the incident. I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was giving, being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold like she was today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. But I mean, does it really matter if you see the knife plunge into a guy? If the man who tried to murder you raised a knife at somebody else at the time that lightning happened to light up that you were able to see it, would that not then mean that if Marshall died, that proves that cause and effect? Emma saw Dark raise the knife, and then Marshall was dead. It's like saying, oh yeah, officer, I totally saw this man holding a gun, but I, I don't remember if he shot it or anything. But that man over there was shot. Yeah, but I don't remember. It's very silly. Permanent picture. What did you see in the instant of the crime occurred? Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and used his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently, I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. You've been through so much. I... I couldn't bring myself to testify about that incident. Oh, so that's why. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. He must have been 14. That's understandable. 
Emma, you are weaker than the Cody. And he saw his hero die. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. And find the evidence to make it airtight. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. There's still something that bothers me about that crime. Something puzzling. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at the time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Well, there's no mystery there. There isn't? Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. Then why was he at the prosecutor's office? He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective's office and the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Oh. Across from the elevator? Alana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly, didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. Well, that explains something, at least. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective? I better have another talk with her. Well, that's very odd. Well, let's move on to the detention center. February 24th, Defension, Defension, Detention Center. Lana, Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul, why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. And that's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about the unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today, not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how, how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial, it really wasn't fair, was it? I believe in you, Lana. I believe that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15, there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana, what the witness, Miss Starr, said. About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. Lana, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't think she talks too much. Really, if anyone's talked too much, it's Lana, and she hasn't said that much at all. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. And she used the same sprite during the trial today, so I think she looked phased then, too. Detective Lana Skye. It's true, I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing! They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was the deputy chief of police back then, but we still he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. You were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really, really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... to gain experience investigating crime scenes so you could use that experience in court, right? Gant's help in the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. The Dark Investigation. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gant, right? 
Yes, Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office and the same investigations. We even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall and Angel Starr. It was the last case Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us! First one at the scene. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Doc that day. The investigation was in its final stages and Doc must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down and then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the cr to the scene, Lana? But wouldn't that be that Neil Marshall would have run after Dark and got there in time to save Emma, but then wouldn't have Gant have also been right behind? Hmm. It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. Well, that's very odd. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. Because, on the one hand, uh, Jake Marshall d did say that he doesn't believe anybody would have been able to match his brother in a fight. But it just seems odd that the knife would be in his back so low from what Emma saw. And again, why wouldn't have Ganta got there before her? I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her. After all, her sister must have gone through. After all, everything her sister must have gone through. Lana wants to be in command. Eh, she doesn't seem to be in command there. After that, I placed Doc under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident. That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. W what are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced of the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with the memories. That case just might not be over yet. Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. The Chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the Chief's office. The site of the final SL9 murder. Probably. Because something is very odd. Let's go to the underground parking lot. See if there's anything. Because why not? Prosecutor's office, underground parking lot. No one here today, not even Miss Starr. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved in court today that the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. But instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've got to find all the answers by tomorrow. It just seems very odd. We'll quickly check in on Edgeworth, because why not? There doesn't seem to be anything new here. Highly doubt we'd find anything new. To the High Prosecutor's Office. See if there's Edgeworth in here. Mr. Edgeworth isn't here. Maybe he's being questioned by an inquiry committee? He took a real beating in court today. 
Yeah, if Lana admitting to falsifying evidence two years ago, I guess we'll just have to come back later. There doesn't seem to be anything new on the desk or anything as well. Then let's go. I guess to the police department. Hey, Marshall. Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Because Sarah, Sarah, you never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? Must be his pet cactus. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But, Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. <laughs> Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. The Dark Trial. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either, all the detectives thought so. What do you mean fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife that with the broken tip? That was Joe Docks, all right. But in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there's a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. Prosecutor Marshall. I got the looks, but he got the brains. Here's the one of the best prosecutors around. I just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he, your brother? He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the king of prosecutors? I knew it! What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. Scars. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in the case investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioner would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? What are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Gant and Sky. The investigation lead, Damon Gant and his second in command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Skye was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. 
There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else is the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard him actually pop the cap off his diddly day before. Too bad I won't be around to work with you when you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. I feel sorry for that man. Well, next is the Criminal Affairs Department, I guess. February 24th, police station. This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, thanks. Oh, that's... I thought Chief meant G Gant, but no, it's that guy there. <laughs> oh, thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying that she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media in tomorrow's trial, there's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief, Ga uh, chief Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right! You can't go in there! It's off limits! Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. <laughs> He'll never know what hit him when we come in and stab him like Joe Dark. But wherever is his counterpart? Jonathan Light. Why is there a fuck-off organ in here? And why is there weird-ass pottery? Alright, weird. Oh, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss Bach. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. Yeah. I never could remember where C was. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember his voice. Oh, it's you two. She can't. He put that paper he was reading on his desk. So, Raito, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies! See that big picture on the wall over there? Oi, 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 This was something that I was going to do because my brain was just like, hey, maybe we should take a look at that big photo. That's the fuck off wibbly wobbly pot. That's the fuck off wibbly wobbly pot. It's the pot. What are you doing here? How are you related to SL9? Big. That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. It's the fuck of pot! I can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. Gant team picture added to the court record. Again, it's just standing there. Is he gonna look at us? Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out all together. Oh, but this office. It was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> that case has long been since over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out! I have a meeting to attend! 
freak. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied a request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? There's gotta be a way to get inside the Chief's office. First things first. Wish I could, like, move around, because again, that's the fuck off pot. What are you doing in the SL9 case? Well, first thing first, we will save. Maybe see if we can run into Gumshoe or some such. Hey, pal! Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battle's between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. The falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. Hmm. Well, we've been going for about two and a half hours. And we went through a, a pretty long testimony section, and we got at least one more, well, technically two, but that came in the, in the trial section. And we got a very important piece of evidence. Why is there a bloodied pot that, uh, like, from... I assume that's the, uh, Gant's office. But either way, it's related to SL9 somehow. Blah, 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 blah. But yeah. This case just keeps going and going and going. There, and, and, uh, it's not, it, it's not as bad as, like, the first testimony part, but the part with the, uh, glove, I think, was a little obtuse, and I would have preferred it if the glove in the tape footage was more obviously sticking out of the, like, uh, bibbidi-bop. I'm trying to think of the word. The vault. The locker. Because it just falling out just seems a little bit innocuous to me. So it took me a bit to really clue in, ah, that's what we need. So yeah, I do enjoy that there's, like, so much, like, twists and turns and backstory to this case, but it does feel like the, uh, the case, like, specifics could have used some more polish here or there, making the glove a bit more noticeable, like, sticking out to make you go, oh, it was in the way, as opposed to just falling out. Maybe a bit more polish so that when you're trying to select the white cloth, just selecting Marshall's locker would suffice, because that's a little silly to be that, <laughs> that specific. As well as, as well as Phoenix going, Oh, I have my trump card, but I better up the ante. It's just like, what the hell does that mean? That made me feel like I needed to put off using the bloodied handprint and used a different piece of evidence. Silly brain in game. But still, I've been enjoying this case a bit, in despite of its flaws, but it's definitely the most flawed case in the game so far. But at the same time, it also is, like, more interesting than ones like Turnabout Sisters and, uh, well, the first Turnabout. Those are, like, more, like, polished and simple, and this one's more complex and flawed. So, like... Average out that however much you want. But I think that shall be it for now. Because, again, we've been going for almost three hours. This case is long as hell. But thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. The Edited Content channel that I swear things are coming to soon. The Neon Icy Wings channel. And then the gaming and streaming channel, Neon Icy Games, that I stream to simultaneously between Twitch and YouTube, and then all of these streams end up there as videos. And then, of course, if you prefer to watch on Twitch, I also dual stream to Twitch on twitch.tv slash neonicywings. Else places I hang out are the various websites, like Twitter, which is going down in flames, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, and Tumblr. 
but uh, to keep track of all my sites, you can just check my link tree, which should be in the various bios and link areas, but it should be linktr.ee slash neonicyrings. I still find that URL weird. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.